Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2R2B's Gundam Reviews. .net. A little bit late here with my look at Gundam Build Fighters, the anime, and episode 4. Perhaps because the episode is a little bit uh, underwhelming compared to the solid start that we've had with the first three episodes. But let's get right to it for some comments. And the best ofs, of course, so let's start with Character of the Week. Well, who did we get to see? We got to see more of the regular cast. Rambaral in the background, we got to see China and uh, China chan come to the shop again, except this time she was going to be blocked by a gunpla idol. Just the idea of that is pretty funny out there. Bouncing all around, reminding us of all of Amir Campbell and things from Seed Destiny, and many, many other anime characters. At the same time, I don't think she made a very strong impression on a lot of people. But overall, for in terms of character this week, I didn't think anybody was really up there, except for the inevitable love interest. China chan is doing good so far. Her development for Gunpla is going to be coming around. She's asked for help, and who better to do it than to come to the shop and do it with Yori. And of course, her bear guy son is going to be on the way, and it's going to be epically cute. Can't wait to actually see that in the anime and the Gunpla itself. But overall, a slow week on the character front. And sadly, I think that goes across the board, including to the MSs as well. For MS of the week, we didn't get to see all that many exciting cameos in the background. Nothing really jumped to mind except that turn X on the shelf, which of course everybody's going to be very excited about. But I'm going to pick my MS of the week, the Gerbera Tetra. It's a great suit. It's getting more love in video games in gun platform. Finally, in a proper HGUC 1144th. And if you're going to see a Gunpla idol out there in a pink MS of an already very cool all red, I mean, what's better than taking a Gundam prototype, stealing it and turning it red, a Char or a Casval for your Gundam? Well, in this case, it's just great to see it out there. And the fact she didn't build it herself, I sort of wondered about that in the show. A bit of a hard time given to her that she had just had people build it for her. But what about Rage and the Odyssey? It's sort of the same relationship going there. Nonetheless, it looked great in there, and at the same time, I can't help but be more curious about other female-centric MSs that we're going to be seeing in the future, like that awesome-looking Cubely that's silhouetted in the OP and something I am quite excited to see once it actually shows up in the show. For scene of the week, there was some cool moments out there. Mihoshi Kirara, she didn't really do all that much in terms of character, but I really did have to laugh at all of her efforts. Building Gunpla, her hands getting dirty and tired, and of course, she's just going to end up farming it out to the boys who are just going to build her a stronger one. But Ron Burrell was there to tell her that all is going to be stronger. But I suppose in an episode where not too much stood out, uh, the scenes, the interactions between China chan and Yorisei, that's exactly what I think everybody who's growing up and building Gunpla as a kid would probably just be dreaming of, that kind of attention actually coming true. And so all of those scenes, quiet and understated as they were, the introduction of a pseudo-triangle, that's only going to last the episode, it looks like. Although you know that Kirara is going to be back, but at the same time, the quiet moments here were some of the best scenes for me, outside of the solid action. The build booster looking good as it zoomed down. Enough for scene of the week? No, I'll just say when she asked him for help and he said yes, that that's the relationship that the rest of this show is going to be built on, and it should be fun to watch. Again, just going through this review here, I can't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed again. The cameo is pretty good. Anytime you get to see an Athrun Justice out there, it's always going to be fun, you'd think. But just, it seems like they had some more big guns in terms of the first episode. Sort of normal. I remember Gundam Age slowing down in that first arc once they landed on the planet. I hope they don't experience some similar fates here. But they do have enough teases coming up in the future. What about the wing, Fettuccini Boy? Of course, what's up with Tatsuya Yuki and his name? And we're going to be finding out more about his fighting in the past shows and the past World Cups out there which should be very interesting to come up. Rage is definitely more involved in it, and Rambarel always out to dish out some advice. But a little bit slow, so let's see and hope that things pick up a little bit more in the future. You're not going to be getting big battles between some great MSs in the past, but it just seems in shows where we have Gundam Wing, and even the Gan just seem to steal the show, more so than these kind of suits. So hopefully things pick up both in the Gunpla and character development and storyline from here on in. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you think about this episode compared to some of the other ones? Where do you want to see the show go? Are they just going to tease the triangle? Or are they actually going to try to flesh one out? Or is this just going to be predetermined that eventually Yorisei will be the father of a Gunpla Meister who's going to be winning World Cups left, right, and center in his Super Build Strike Freedom Super Strike Gundam? 
Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and of course, stick around. I'll be back next week with episode four. Hopefully the show and the review a little bit more exciting. But in the meantime, let me know what you think, and don't forget to go to GundamReviews.net and vote on the episode itself. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week. Oi, oi. Wearing pink doesn't necessarily mean that it's a feminine suit.